Hello and welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to be talking to you about is asynchronous the best way to go in ASP.NET Core? More on that later on in the video. But first I want to talk to you about what is synchronous and what is asynchronous. Now we're going to start off with synchronous and I've got some diagrams that I've put together that I'm going to demonstrate to you now. So this is synchronous. That's going back to my um, days when I used to work in a fast food restaurant. That's me behind the counter there. No arms for some reason, but anyways, the customer has come in and requested for a hamburger. So I've taken that customer's request and started to prepare the hamburger for the customer. As you can see, another customer has joined the queue. So I've prepared the burger for the customer, but the same customer has also requested for a portion of fries. So I'm going ahead and preparing the portion of fries for the customer, but now another customer has joined the queue and is getting a little impatient. Once the food order is ready, I can deliver it to the customer, but as you can see, there's three more people that have joined the queue, three more customers. So that's synchronous in a nutshell. Basically, you have a request, that request is allocated to a thread, and that thread will basically go ahead and handle and return the response. It's simple, but very slow. The alternative to that is asynchronous, and again, I've got some diagrams which I'm going to demonstrate to you now. So going back to the same example as before, customer comes in and requests for a hamburger. Now this time, rather than me actually preparing the order and delivering it to the customer, I can delegate it off to my co-workers, Matt and Dan. So if the customer requests to have a portion of fries as well, they can do that and I can delegate it off to my co-workers. Whilst the food is being prepared, I can serve the next customer. Once the food order is ready and ready to go, it can be delivered to the customer. So that's asynchronous in a nutshell. Basically you have a request, but you can delegate it off to another thread who would handle the request and return the response. It's a lot quicker, but can get a little bit complicated if there's too much going on. And is asynchronous really the best way to go in ASP.NET Core? When you look at a web server, and you load a page and you load all the images and the style sheets, they all run parallel. They don't wait for each other to finish loading before the next one loads. They all load at the same time. So is that the best way to go? Well, I've got a demonstration which I'm going to show to you now. So now we're going to have a look at the demonstration that I've put together. So I've created a test API here. Um, basically, it's running under API test. Um, and we've got two methods here. We've got a synchronous and an asynchronous method. So we've got the normal synchronous method here. Um, this basically returns a type of category, an instance of category, and it goes into the um, category service and uh, runs the test method. Um, very similar with the async uh, method here, um, but there's a couple of differences. As you can see, we've got this async here. Um, we've also got this task class with a generic of category type wrapped around it. Um, we've also renamed the method, um, added async on the end. And also we've got this await here. Now what this await does is that basically it's an async method, but it will wait to get a return um, from this method before it proceeds to go to the next step. If we were to get rid of the await now, it would return an error. Um, as you can see there. So let's just have a quick look and see what we're doing in the category service. So in here, we're basically, we've got our DB context from entity framework. We're passing that in through dependency injection. Um, and then we've got our methods here. So we've got our test one, which is synchronous. Um, it's just basically getting a category record based on the slug of the category or the URL. Um, test async, very, very similar. Um, just that it's an asynchronous method so we've got the relevant async await methods in there but it's basically doing the same thing so what i've done here is i've created a console application um, it will run a certain number of threads um, to see how long it takes to run these threads so the first task we're going to be doing is we're going to call our synchronous um, method in there um, that will run as many threads as we did declare up here. So first of all, we're going to start with one. And that will basically tell us how long it takes to run once they're all completed. 
Then we're going to do the same with, a, with our asynchronous method. We're going to run as many threads as we declared and it will output how long it will take. And the purpose of this test is just basically see um, which one is the quickest. So let's go ahead and perform our test. I should just say that I've opened, I'm basically doing two um, test threads. I'm basically calling the async and the synchronous before actually starting the test, just so the actual server warms up. Um, what we can see here is that the synchronous will run in just over two seconds. Asynchronous, um, about the same amount of time, but it is slightly quicker than the synchronous. Um, so that's one nil to the, uh, the asynchronous test, but let's increase the number of threads and see if the uh, time changes at all. So yeah, just loading up our test threads. Here we go, so we're starting with synchronous, running 2.1 seconds, and asynchronous again, a little bit quicker, but there's not a lot in it. There's about, what, 40, 50 milliseconds, so there's not a lot in it. Let's go ahead and let's increment our number of threads a bit. Let's give it a bigger number. Let's uh, restart the test. So yeah, once again, running our test threads. So here we go, we've got 50 threads open. So 2.2 seconds for synchronous. You can see asynchronous is starting to get a bit slower now. It's slightly quicker than synchronous, but the gap is closing. Let's do one final test and up it to 500 and see if there's any difference there. So once again, the threads are open. So we've got 500 threads opened, synchronous, ran in 3.7 seconds. Oh, asynchronous, I think it's going to be a bit longer. It is, yep, it's a lot longer, it's 5.3 seconds. So, basically the more threads you run um, to a particular method, the synchronous is going to be a lot quicker than the asynchronous. Um, so it goes to show that asynchronous is not always the uh, way forward with things. So I can see some web application frameworks where using asynchronous is going to be beneficial, such as JavaScript or using a Blazor application. Um, but you shouldn't be using asynchronous just for the sake of it, particularly if you're using it for the synchronous methods, like in the example that I showed to you. Although I will say that running 500 threads at URL at the same time is a little extreme. You're going to have a very high volume traffic website for that to happen, but it's something worth considering. So for more articles, visit roundthecode.com, visit my Twitter page, at roundthecode, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, you can go to roundthecode.com forward slash YouTube. And until next time, it's goodbye.